All right, thanks, Kendall. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, let me fumble through this screen sharing. All right, <clears throat> so this is exciting. Uh, a lot of people on this call. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm glad we can come together today to learn about some recent botany and plant-focused projects that are going on in the state. I'm super excited about all the speakers. And again, thank you, Kendall and Jeff, uh, for all of your work um, organizing this event. So like Kendall said, I'm Tara Littlefield. I work uh, for the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves. I've spent most of my career in field botany and natural areas conservation, and I manage our plant conservation and assessment branch. Um, I'm gonna provide some updates from our office projects related to plant conservation. Um, at the end of the talk, I'll throw on some links because in the presentation, there's gonna be a lot of links to like reports or, or different online resources. Um, there's so much more going on related to plant conservation than, than what I have time to report on in this short time frame. And obviously it goes much beyond our organization. There's a lot of people doing more and more great work. Um, on a positive note, I'm seeing our botanical community grow over the years uh, with more people of varying ages and backgrounds becoming interested in plants and botany. Uh, the increase in online botany social media has been really cool to watch. iNaturalist continues to just blow my mind. Uh, Vanessa Volker is going to be giving a talk on that in a little bit. Uh, the increased interest in native plant gardening with groups such as Wild Ones and Garden Clubs and Seed Swaps, um, more conservation projects and collaborations amongst uh, state and federal agencies, more people getting bit by the botany bug with the desire to identify all the plants. Uh, so so it's it's been really great to, to watch um, this grow over the years on a negative note. Don't like to be too negative, but there's still some important areas that are that are getting destroyed by development, roadside herbicide spraying. Um, we've recently documented some that we are working on that we weren't able to pr protect for a variety of reasons. So this is this is frankly heartbreaking. Uh, but you know, there's there's just there's just a lot more to do in order to increase our conservation efforts. So I'll mostly be talking about positive stuff, but yeah, we just need to keep plugging along. Um, focusing on nature preserves, we're a state organization under the Energy and Environment Cabinet. Uh, we have about a, a team of about 30 folks now. Um, in the general categories of biologists, land managers, and GIS data scientists. Uh, we've grown a lot over the past decade, nearly doubled in size. So that's that's been really cool. Increased partnerships and grants and, and all of those things has, has made that happen. Um, Nature Preserves, uh, we're the state heritage program. Many of you might be familiar um, with heritage programs. Um, almost every state in, in our country has one. Uh, we house the Natural Heritage Database. Our staff, biologists, and partners collect data across the state, which gets entered into our heritage database. And then this data um, helps inform species assessments and conservation planning. Uh, we have 10 full-time biologists and and two technicians now um, that work collaboratively with our data and GIS team. And I wanna give a shout out to Lexi Sheehan, our data team lead, um, who works with us on improving data collection and storage methods, lots of modernization of, of all of these things, field maps, survey one, two, threes, um, you name it, creating you know more efficient databases. There's been a lot of effort the past few years uh, to, to increase um, and modernize our efforts here. Uh, the biologist bane is what to do with all our data and what to do with all our specimens. So we're, we're slowly plugging along and trying to figure it all out. Um, we work with partners within the Natural Heritage Network across species range ranges um, through NatureServe to work on assessing global ranks. We coordinate plant conservation efforts with Native Plant Society and other partners. And you know the main reason why we do all this is to prevent species extinctions and to prevent rare species uh, and keep the common species common. So um, most of our biologists at Nature Preserves are botanists and plant ecologists. The plants are the foundation of all life; they rule the world. Uh, but you know, uh, it, it's it's just a, a fact that a lot of our um, uh, Diverse sites are, are driven by the plant communities and the plants that, that occur there. Um, we spent time, uh, we spend time working uh, to cross train with land managers since that is what drives, of course, a lot of our important natural area recovery and, and management work. Um, 
we've had a lot of um, increased efforts on rare plant recovery, floristic, natural community, uh, taxonomy, mapping, and assessments. Uh, uh, Kendall, with her uh, lichen assessments recently, um, has been really cutting edge. That's that's really great stuff. Um, we've really been increasing uh, our efforts on uh, pollinators <laughs> and terrestrial snails. Uh, uh, plants and pollinators, of course, go hand in hand. Um, you know, we've got uh, more invertebrate biologists and are cross training our botanists with with pollinators as as well. Um, so. I'll just real quickly highlight a few folks on here um, that are on our plant team. So Devin Rogers here uh, is uh, has been with us for for many years now and, and leads a lot of our rare plant and uh, natural community uh, uh, assessment and uh, inventory projects. Tony Romano, um, uh, a botanist. Uh, who uh, manages our roadside uh, habitat programs and inventory projects. Uh, Kendall McDonald, uh, who uh, is our resident lichenologist uh, and works on our forest assessment programs. Uh, Rachel Cook, who works a lot on our recovery plant programs and projects uh, with the federally listed species. Um, and myself, we've had two botany techs this year, uh, Toby Shia and Sarah Kosianiak, who have been working on all the projects. And then highlighted here as well as our invertebrate biologist, because we're kind of integrating the two together now, uh, Shelby Fulton, who is our Lepidoptera expert, uh, among many other things. And then Katie Cody, uh, who has been working on uh, building our bee monitoring and inventory programs. So. Uh, uh, Martina Hines here, she wasn't in this picture, but she is our resident natural community expert and works with our staff uh, to get more work done in, in on our natural communities. So our agency is also the state's natural heritage program. We helped, we have helped so far to conserve a half a percent of the state, which seems really low, but a lot of work has went into that. Um, we own and manage some of the best remaining natural areas in the state, grasslands, wetlands, some high quality forests um, in our nature preserve system, uh, where we focus on protection, monitoring, and management of rare plants, insects, and animals. Um, so just a shout out to our natural areas and recovery branch folks. Um, our preserves are managed by our awesome team of natural areas uh, managers. Uh, pictured here uh, is you see this, our, our team here, the crew is conducting mid-story and brush management. A shout out to Heidi Braunreiter right here, who uh, manages our prescribed fire uh, programs and coordinates our natural areas techs. And Jason Nally, um, who manages our natural areas branch and all of our natural areas branch managers and technicians. So many of the plants uh, and insects that we monitor and research would not be around if it were not for our management crews that conduct pres prescribed burns and invasive species management. Uh, so many of our biologists work uh, hand in hand with our uh, uh, natural areas managers to, to implement uh, important recovery actions. So all of these, uh, you know, we work on so many projects. Uh, we every year we publish an annual report, um, and I'll I'll post this in the chat um, when I'm done with this talk. Uh, you can look at uh, in more detail um, all the different projects that that we've worked on this past year, and then also on that link you could probably find um, our annual reports from years past as well. So just a few, you know, quick floristic res resources that I was going to highlight um, for anyone interested in Kentucky bot botany um, should know about. Last year, um, Alan Weekly uh, gave a talk about the flora of the southeastern U.S., and they were just about to launch their new mobile app for our region with updated keys and information. Uh, that was done last May, um, which uh, this is just an amazing resource. Um, if you don't have it on your smartphone yet, uh, get it. It's it's great. When I was first learning plants, I had to lug around giant books in my backpack. It was really heavy, and now everything is just at your fingertips. Uh, but if you don't have a smartphone, you can also have the PDFs uh, that you can print out if you want, and then these desktop mobile uh, or the desktop app as well is a great resource for just um, you know your desktop. Of course, Julian Campbell. I got to give a shout out to Julian. 
um, our long-term partner in plant conservation. Uh, he has been creating this plant atlas for years. Um, this, I'll also put this in the chat as well, a link to this. Um, we work with him on, you know, getting more county records databased and Julian has great information in his atlas um, on, you know, extra information on the plant specimens and uh, taxonomy notes and, and all kinds of things. So just wanted to, to give Julian a shout out. There's several other websites that our folks and, and different people in botany utilize all the time. Uh, to help us with our assessments and our surveys. Um, and these are listed here too. I'm not going to really talk too much about them. Um, I'll post them in the chat. A lot of them are herbarium specimens that are digitized online and different atlases range wide, uh, NatureServe Explorer, um, iNaturalist, of course. Uh, uh, Vanessa is going to be talking about that. In the past couple of years, we've really spent a lot of time um, uh, going through all of the plants in Kentucky and doing uh, status assessments and updating the taxonomy to weekly in, in Julian's uh, taxonomy. So uh, lots of database work that, that we had been working on. Uh, we've got 2,200 approximately native plants uh, known from the state, uh, 817 non-native, and Franny's gonna be talking about how to assess those for invasive uh, threats and or for invasive uh, metrics. Um, every four years, we we do a deep dive and and reassess our our state listed plants, endangered, threatened, special concern. Um, and the trends were similar uh, that we you know found uh, during this assessment. About twenty percent of our flora is rare. And we track that in our database. It's about 500 plants total um, with varying uh, you know, designations. About 65 of those are globally rare. Of course, we've got the nine federally listed plants that we work on. We work a lot on, uh, on plant community uh, descriptions. Um, Martina Hines is heading that project. And hopefully sometime this year, we'll be able to get our updated plant uh, natural community profiles online. Let's see here. Um, and these some more links. Um, these are links to our rare plant report that came out in 2022. Um, and then also uh, just a, a list of the plants themselves. So I'll, I'll post that in the chat. Something that was really big that we did this past year was add plants to the State Wildlife Action Plan in partnership with Kentucky Fish and Wildlife. So this is kind of a big deal for plant conservation. Uh, they Traditionally, plants and, and insects were not incorporated into the swap, and this helps us communicate shared priorities, um, shared priority species between colleagues and agencies and academia, nonprofit conservation partners. Um, so far, we've integrated all of our globally rare plants, and we've got an additional 80 plants that, that we'll, we'll work on integrating into the State Wildlife Action Plan. Uh, over the next couple of years. Um, all of the plants that we've suggested um, uh, in, are adding to the swap are linked to our natural communities. Uh, and so um, a, a big goal of ours was to get all of our natural communities uh, represented uh, uh, in proxy through those plants um, in, in the State Wildlife Action Plan. So um, this is another link I'll add into the chat. There's some really great chapters that we wrote for the State Wildlife Action Plan on just sort of an overview of the plants in Kentucky and the rarity and assessments and all of that. So uh, check out the report. It's, it's huge. <laughs> There's also some online profiles of all the State Wildlife Action Plan plants that we added as well. So I'll add that to the, um, the chat. So... Um, this was a rare plant hotspot analysis that our, our data team worked on last year with us, um, kind of highlighting where our diversity is across the state. Uh, the red are where the highest concentrations of plants are. And of course, you see here the Cumberland Plateau, our high elevation mountains. You've got the Kentucky River here, uh, the Big Barrens region and grasslands and far western Kentucky and wetlands. Um, you know, it's it's kind of all over the place. You can definitely see data gaps um, uh, on this map as well. The blue hexagons are the state wildlife action plan, the, the species of greatest conservation need plants that we integrated with the state wildlife action plan. So you can see here that 
you know, those designated plants are have a pretty good coverage, but there's still a lot of holes um, in terms of having having those plants represented um, through all, all the regions. Uh, this year, this past year, actually just last month, uh, was the 50th anniversary of the uh, Endangered Species Act. Uh, this was a graphic that Kendall McDonald uh, made. She's an amazing artist uh, and always makes everything look really pretty. Uh, so she made these uh, these uh, graphics uh, for a meeting that we had with our Endangered Species Act partners, the feds um, and our state partners uh, last year. Um, we work a lot on federally listed plants. We administer that program in partnership with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, we work every year on these nine plants. Uh, a lot of them are, um, you know, we have on our nature preserves as well, and our natural areas managers focus a lot of effort on, on uh, managing the habitat. Um, a whole slew of things are going on, very multifaceted approach to conservation on all of these plants, and we have so many different partners. I don't have time to really talk about any of it, um, but uh, again, uh, look on our annual reports and you can find more information. We've been uh, administering this program since 1986 um, and have done a lot of really great work. Um, I'll highlight just briefly uh, a, a, one of the federally listed plants that's federally threatened that we've been working on a lot over the past few years um, is white fringes orchid. Um, we've been working on a pop restoring a population on our state nature preserve for over 20 years. and and status assessments on, on all the other populations, but we recently were awarded a national competitive grant to restore the remaining white fringes orchid populations in Kentucky. So um, there's going to be lots of uh, more information coming out on this in the future, um, publications and more presentations as we work to uh, restore all these populations with our partners. Um, something that was really cool last year, as uh, we documented, I know there's going to be a lot of pollinator talks of federally listed plants. Uh, Bashir is talking about Price's potato bean that's federally listed, and Sean and Chris are going to be talking about glow bladder pod um, and pollinators. Here's a pollinator um, that we just documented new for white fringes orchid last year, the white line sphinx moth, and that was a, a super cool um, event to witness, and I'll see if I can, uh, I don't think I can get this to Play. Um, there's a video that I was trying. Well, it's super cool. The sphinx moth fits perfectly uh, in the white fringes orchid. Uh, and so um, I can't really get this video to play. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but uh, it's super cool. Um, uh, we'll be. Uh, 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 talking about more of this and doing more research in the pollinators of white fringes orchid in the future. So look for more information on that in, 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 coming, uh, in the coming year. Um, and just real briefly, uh, you know, we do a lot of plant propagation uh, projects with our partners um, here, Kentucky Clover with Cincinnati Zoo, Valerie Pence. We've worked with her to grow these plants and we've been transplanting them out. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to Jess Slade. Um, at the UK Arboretum, who's been really increasing rare plant propagation projects over the past couple of years. And this is a recent one that we worked on with her, um, the Mountain Lover, and we introduced it into um, uh, a preserve in uh, along the Kentucky River. Um, I mentioned briefly, um, you know, our work with natural areas managers. We do a lot of <clears throat> monitoring and management collaboration, um, you know, to, to work towards adaptive management for some of our rare species, uh, to come up with best management practices. So we do a lot of long-term monitoring plots and on, on preserves and collaborating with, uh, with partners. Um, but I wanted to end this talk <laughs> Uh, with, uh, I think I alluded to this in the plants overview, um, you know, every year we find, you know, new uh, species unknown to the state, new county records, range extensions. It's super cool and, and it's, you know, something that's um, uh, uh, makes uh, what we do, uh, you know, a, a little bit extra exciting, you know, finding new, new species. And this past year, uh, Devin Rogers and Toby Shia, who um, are botanists here at Nature Preserves, discovered a really cool population of round leaf sundew. 
Uh, in the Cumberland Plateau while they were working on Section 6 projects, um, and this was not documented before, really awesome, uh, you know, discovery on uh, essentially like a, a vertical, uh, uh, you know, sphagnum bog. Uh, but what was super interesting about this discovery was was how how the general public uh, you know took re, you know interest in it and it and it kind of went viral, which never happens you know in the plant world. Uh, so you know we posted this on Facebook um, and it was picked up by like so many uh, news organizations, <laughs> which was pretty cool. I'm going to play this uh, this video. Well, botanists have discovered a new carnivorous plant in a remote Kentucky gorge. The Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves found the first known population of what's called the round leaf sundew in the Cumberland Plateau. It doesn't need much soil to survive because it gets its nutrients from the insects it traps on its sticky leaves. Since this is the only known population of the plant, the round leaf sundew is considered endangered in Kentucky. Wow, I can't believe they're still finding new things. See, I, I mean, like, that, that still amazes me. I mean, for how many hundreds and hundreds of years mm -hmm. yeah. we're still finding some new species and there's probably but you know what some of them can cross pollinate and new ones can be created it really reminds me of a venus flytrap and it kind of looks like one in a yeah. way yeah but definitely i see that kind of like inside out i guess you could say yeah so i see it i feel what if they could be cousins <laughs> You know, I just never thought I would, you know, watch the five o'clock news and see a conversation like that um, from a discovery of, of you know, botanists in Kentucky. So that was super awesome. Um, I'll, I'm going to end this talk with we're hiring a, a seasonal botanist. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, contact us um, and I will end the presentation with that. Uh, thank you all for listening. And I will. Um, add a lot of these links into the chat. Sarah? Yes.